Hello and welcome. There are two sacraments for healing. One for the spiritual illness, which is the sacrament of repentance and confession. The other for physical and psychological illness, which is the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. In today's episode, we will take you through the sixth sacrament, the sacrament of anointing of the sick or the unction of the sick. And it's simply seven prayers prayed on some oil which the priest prays at the sick person's house. Today, it's usually practiced during the 55 days Lent if you're sick or not. The sacrament is called the sacrament of lamps. For the early Christian used to place oil in a lamp from which was hung seven other lamps. Each lamp was lit at the beginning of every prayer. This rite still exists, however, the seven lamps were placed by seven wicks made from cotton wool, which is set in a plate of wool. The number seven signifies the seven spirits of God, which are mentioned in the book of Revelation. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. The Spirit of God dwells and sanctifies the oil in order to heal those anointed by it. It is advisable that the wicks be placed in the sign of the cross in the plate of oil. Our Lord Jesus Christ instituted this sacrament when he said to his disciples, Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, and whatever city you enter and they receive you, heal the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Our fathers, the apostles, practiced it according to the orders of their master. As the Bible says, So they went out and preached that the people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. St. James says, Is any among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord, and pray of faith will save the sick man, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. St. James leaves no doubt that the sacrament of unction is established by God, and this is how the apostles practiced it. Historically, it is proven that the sacrament of unction was celebrated in conjunction with the repentance and confession. From these words of St. James, the purpose of the sacrament is vividly clear. It is bodily healing and forgiveness of sins. And as the priest anoints with the holy unction, he says that this sacrament is for the healing of the soul and the body. The sacrament of the holy unction is celebrated every time a Christian needs it. The sacrament is not obligatory, but a voluntary sacrament. It is good, though, for all Christians to draw near to the sacrament. This is why our church has laid down that the sacrament be celebrated in church on the last Friday of the Holy Lent. Just as with all sacraments, so to here, if we expect to have the proper results, we must accept the sacrament with faith. Of course, an ill person is not always healed because God may have another plan for him. The Holy Unction does not replace repentance and confession. In essence, the forgiveness of sins comes through faith in God, sincere repentance and confession of sins. Now let's take a look at the rite of the sacrament of the Unction of the Sick. When the priest comes to perform the sacrament of the Unction of the Sick, he usually wears his priestly vestment as, were, as he will be accomplishing two sacraments together, the sacrament of the, unction, the confession and the sacrament of the unction of the sick. During confession, which must take place before the sacrament of the unction of the sick, the sick person confesses honestly and with true repentance, promising to walk with God after his recovery and striving never to return to sin. Then the priest reads the absolution for him, 
after giving him advice, guidance and spiritual exercises which may be needed for his spiritual growth. The priest then advises him to receive Holy Communion as soon as possible after the sacrament of the unction of sick. If he is too sick to go to church, the priest can bring him the Holy Communion to him at home. On the table is placed uh, a dish which, which contains some pure oil, preferably olive oil, with seven pieces of cotton wool shaped like wicks. Each wick is lit at the start of each prayer. The priest stands facing the east and the sick is seated before him in reverence facing the west and the rest of the family members stand around the priest. The priest then starts the seven prayers of the candle or oil. The prayer starts by the thanksgiving prayer and Psalm 50 for repentance. Each prayer consists of the following. 1. A litany or Oshea. 2. A reading from the Pauline epistle. 3. The litany of the gospel. 4. The, a reading from the Holy Gospel. 5. A special prayer. And finally, 6. The Lord's Prayer. An exception is for the first and last prayers, which both have extra or different prayers to be said. For example, the first prayer has some prayers and supplications that the priest is asking for God's mercy and salvation to the person and to the place. Also in the first prayer we read the Catholic epistle from St. James, chapter 5, verse 10 to 20, instead of the Pauline epistle reading. In the last prayer, there are four different prayers to be said by the priest after the Gospel reading, and then they recite the Orthodox Creed with 41 times Kyrie eleison. After that, the priest prays the absolution for the sick person and anoints him with the holy oil. In the church books, it is said that the sick person is to receive anointing for seven days. Also, in some old church books, there are seven prayers to be said while putting off the wicks. The order of prayer of the litanies is the same as those in the baptismal rite and lacan. One, the litany of the sick. Two, the litany of the travelers. Three, the litany for the waters. Four, the litany for the leaders. Five, the litany for the departed. And six, the litany for the oblations. And finally, seven, the litany for the catechumens. Note, no unbeliever should be anointed by the unction of the sick oil as it is the holy sacramental oil given only to the baptized. If an unbeliever asks to be anointed, common oil is brought and the priest makes the sign of the cross on it three times, the praise of the litany of the sick, and then anoints the sick person. Also note that no one should be anointed directly after Holy Communion, as Holy Communion is the perfection and seal of all sacraments. Now let's look at the general candle on the last Friday of Lent. Why does the church perform the sacrament of the unction of the sick to the whole congregation on the last Friday of Lent? It is a known fact that all sacraments are accomplished in the church with the exception of the sacrament of the unction of sick, as the sick may be too weak to come to church so the priest officiates it in the home. However, once a year the church performs its sacrament in the church and it takes place on the last Friday of the Holy Lent, that is the Friday before Passion Week. It is called the General Candile. During the Holy Week of Bascha, the church does not perform this sacrament and therefore performs it and anoints the entire congregation on the last Friday of the Lent. So what is the purpose of the General Candil? To remind people of the importance and significance of the sacrament of unction of the sick and the healing of every believer. To serve all those believers who have not called the priest privately at home. And to anoint all the believers prior to Passion Week for it is not permissible to perform the sacrament of unction of the sick during the Holy Week because the Church cares for the prayers of this great week and concentrates its prayers and contemplations on the Passion of Christ and the blessings of the mystery of redemption and the act of salvation. Hence, 
The general Kandil must take place before the Holy Passion Week, just as in the same way the general funeral takes place following the Palm Sunday Mass and prior to the Bascha prayers. As no funeral rites are allowed to take place during Passion Week, officiating the sacrament of the unction of the sick in homes during the Holy Lent. Some believers are accustomed to asking the priest during the Holy Lent to perform the sacrament in their homes as a means of blessing, even though they may not have a family member sick and in need of the sacrament of the unction of the sick. Because so many people request this, the priests are obliged to visit the homes, but because of time of constraints are unable to perform all seven prayers. Therefore, they only end up praying one or two of the prayers in each home. There are a few points that we should look at for this practice. The sacrament of unction of the sick should be performed for a person who is genuinely sick and in need of this sacrament, but sometimes our sickness can be spiritual or psychological. The priest and the person who accepts the sacrament must be uh, abstaining from food for certain hours before accomplishing the sacrament. Hence, performing the sacrament in the early morning whilst people are still fasting is the most appropriate time. Many people consider that the priest coming to the house is a blessing, especially during the period of Lent, which is a time of spiritual revival. They consider that the priest visiting the house is a way to encourage the household to continue in praying and fasting and always practice the sacrament of repentance and confession. But if there isn't enough time to pray the unction of the sick and the people are not fasting, then the priest should pray the ritual prayers of blessing of the houses. Prayers which ask the Lord to dwell within the house and keep the members of the household a note on the prayer for blessing houses. It is different from the Holy Sacrament of Unction, so it can be done at any time in the homes of the believers. It is not a necessary requirement, however, that the members of the household and the priest fast, for this rite is not a church sacrament. This prayer can be done at any time and as often as people like it. This prayer is not just restricted to those within new homes, but all people as a source of blessing in their homes. Why do people sometimes receive the sacrament of the unction of the sick and yet are not healed? It could be because they lack faith. The Bible says, He did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Or it could be that God in His wisdom sees that this illness is beneficial to the person's spiritual life, as the case with St. Paul, who prayed three times to be healed, but God said to him, My strength is made perfect in weakness. We need to understand that in this sacrament we do not dictate to God what to do, but rather ask for His mercies. So this concludes our episode for today. I hope you benefited from the information that was given you and that it will enlighten you the next time you attend this sacrament at the home or in the church. God bless you and see you in our next episode.